In this video, I'll show you exactly how I've made this stunning title slide animation in PowerPoint and how I've made this wonderful transition to the next slide as well. And this is actually the missing part from my previous pitch zoom tutorial. And hopefully now you'll know all of the secrets. So let's jump into the wonderful world of PowerPoint animations. And by the way, this PowerPoint template is absolutely free. Just go to pptskill.com, click on preview, then sign up for free. And once you've signed in, go to chapter 12 and click on the bonus slides pitch zoom template. And on this lesson, you'll find the free download button. We just might need to scroll down a bit. And here it is, the download button. Just click on it and you'll get the free pitch zoom template. OK, my friends, so let's jump into this fresh blank new slide where we can start creating everything from scratch. And first of all, let's fill this slide with a beautiful background picture. And for that, let me jump to my previous slide where I have already inserted this nice image. It comes from freepick.com. Link is in the video description. So let's just copy this image and let's paste it into our blank beautiful slide. And next, let me show you how we can create a wonderful glass morphic effect. And for that, we'll need to add a blurred version of this photo as the slide background. So let me show you how we can do that. Let's just duplicate the image. And now let's make this image fully blurred. Let's just right click on the duplicate image. Let's go to picture format. Then let's go to artistic effects and let's look for the blur effect. Here it is. Let's apply the maximum blur and wait a second. And here it is, a fully blurred image. Now let's just copy this blurred image and let's delete it. We won't need it anymore. And now let's click on the slide. And for the slide fill, let's choose picture and for picture source, click on clipboard. And this way we have pasted that blurred image as the slide background. And now we can move the original sharp image back to the slide on top of the blurred background. And next, my friends, let me show you how does this glass morphic effect work. Let's just insert any shape we like, for example, a circle. Let's right click on it and let's go to format shape. And now for the fill, let's choose slide background fill. And skadoosh, as you can see now, the circle is using that blurred slide background as its fill. And this way we're getting this nice glass morphic effect. Additionally, we can add a thin white line to this circle and add a white inside shadow with a little bit of blur as well. And this way we'll get an even more realistic glass morphic effect. And by the way, you can move the circle around the slide and it will always adapt to the blurred slide background. That's super duper awesome. OK, so now that you know how the glass morphic effect works, let's delete the circle and let me show you how we can animate this beautiful slide title. Let's play all of the animations on the first slide once again. And as you can see, all of the three slide title words nicely fade in with a little bit of upward motion. So let me copy all of these three text boxes and let's paste them into our slide. Let me grab those rounded rectangles at the corners of the slide as well. Let's paste them into our slide. And now, of course, we want to create all of the animations from scratch. So let's open up the animation pane and let's delete all of the animations. And now let's start working with this first text box pitch. Let me show you how we can make it go up and wipe down at the same time. So let's make sure the first text box is selected and let's add a wipe animation to it and direction from top. Let's open up the animation pane so that we can better see all of the animations that we're adding. And now let's make sure that this wipe animation starts with previous duration 0.8 seconds and let's give it a preview. And as you can see, this first text box simply wipes from top. Now to make it a bit more interesting, let's add a second animation to the same text box. And this time let's look for a motion path line animation. And once the motion path animation has been added, we can grab the red bubble, which is the ending position of the animation. And let's drag it slightly upwards just to make the travel distance shorter. Now we can set this motion path to start with previous as well, duration 1.25 seconds. And in the animation options, let's apply a maximum smooth end. And now one more thing, right now this motion path would move this text box downwards and we would like the opposite to happen. So let's make sure the motion path is selected. Let's go to effect options and let's click on reverse path direction. Now the text box should be going up. Let's give it a preview. And now the text box smoothly goes up and wipes from top at the same time. And this way we get this nice effect that's super duper awesome. And next, to save some time, we can select the first text box, double click on the animation painter and paste the same two animations to the rest of the slide title text boxes. Let's click on the animation painter to deactivate it and let's give it a preview, skadoosh, all of the text boxes nicely slide in. But to make it more interesting, let's select the middle two animations and let's add a delay of 0.25 seconds. And for the last two animations, 
let's add a delay of 0.5 and now the text boxes come in with a slight delay that's nice and by the way let me paste the same two animations to all of those rounded rectangles at the corners of the slide as well and let's move those rounded rectangle animations to the top of the animation pane list just to stay organized and this is what we've created so far that's looking awesome and before we continue, let me just set the slide transition for this slide to something subtle. For example, fade, that's nice. And next, we can insert a second blank slide, where we'll be adding all of those glass morphic circles. And as before, let me use the same beautiful background picture, but this time, let's jump into the picture crop options, and let's zoom in into the image. And for this slide, let's make sure we're using the morph transition, transition duration 2 seconds, and let's give it a preview, and since we have a zoomed in image on the second slide, we get a nice zoom in animation thanks to the morph transition, which does all of the animation between the slides. And now on the second slide, let's add a blurred image background as well, and since you already know how to do it, let me do it quickly, and I'll catch you in a second. And as we did previously, let's make sure that we bring the original photo on top of the blurred background, and before we start adding those glass morphic circles, let me grab those rounded rectangles from our previous slide and let's remove their animations because we don't need them to be animated on the second slide. And one more thing, let me grab this table of contents text box and let's paste it into our second slide and let's paste it to our first slide as well. Let's just move it up and outside of the slide. Morph transition will do all of the animation magic and let's check it out on the full screen. Okay, so here is our first slide. And next we smoothly transition to the next slide, we get that subtle photo zoom effect and the table of contents text box comes in from the top, that's easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Okay my friends, so let's start working with these beautiful circles and once again to create this nice glass morphic effect, I've set the fill of these circles to the slide background fill, I've added a thin white line and a bit of a blurred white inside shadow. And to keep it simple for this tutorial, I've just added some text inside the circles, but you can go one step further and insert clickable slide zooms inside these circles. And for that, feel free to check out my previous pitch zoom tutorial. And next we have these smaller circles, which are grouped with some beautiful icons from phosphoricons.com. And now to save some time, let me copy all of these guys and let's paste them into our second slide. Let's take a quick look at the animation pane. There should be no animations. That's good. And now since we're using the morph transition and we have multiple shapes on the slide, it's actually really important to name all of these shapes in a proper way because otherwise the morph transition might mix up a bit. So let me open up the selection pane and let me show you how I've named all of these circles. So when you want the morph transition to work properly, make sure the names of your shapes start with double exclamation marks and then use the same name on both of the slides. And then after the double exclamation marks, you can use any text you wish. For example, I've named this smaller circle as mission and this bigger circle mission big. And then I've followed the same naming procedure for the rest of the circles. And since it's important for our shapes to use the same names on both of the slides, the easiest way to do that is just to copy them from slide two to slide one. And first, let me grab all of the bigger circles and let's paste them into our first slide. Let's align them to the middle and to the center so that they are precisely sitting on top of each other. And let's move them a bit to the right and let's make them bigger as well. I'm using 7 centimeters for the height and width. That's nice. And now let's hide this text inside the circle because we don't need it to be visible right away. Let's jump into format shape, text options, and let's make the text fully transparent. And now let's check it out on the full screen. And for some reason the circle is blue, so let me jump back into the format shape and let's make sure the fill is set to the slide background fill, okay? And now let's take a look once again. So here is the first slide and then we smoothly transition to the next slide and all of the circles nicely distribute on the slide, skadoosh and all of that thanks to the morph transition and the proper names that we've given to all of the shapes, that's nice. And now we can start working with those smaller circles as well. Let's make sure we select all of them on the second slide and let's paste them into the first slide. And now all we have to do is to align them nicely around the bigger circle. But to save some time, let me delete these guys and let me copy those smaller circles from my previous slide and let's paste them into our first slide. We just might need to adjust them a bit. That's nice. And let me open up the animation pane and let's delete all of these circle animations because I would like to show you how to make them from scratch. 
And by the way, I think I forgot to move those two last animations to the top of the animation list, so let's do that now. And let's preview the first slide animations once again, that's nice. And next we'll have to animate all of the circles, but first let's preview the morph transition on the full screen. And now we can see all of the smaller circles on the first slide, and then they smoothly distribute on the second slide, that's nice. Okay, so let's select this small circle in the middle, and let's add a couple of animations to it. And the first animation I would like to add is the zoom animation, let's make sure it starts with previous. Animation duration 0.75 seconds, delay 0.75 as well. And now let's add a second animation to the same circle. And this time let's pick a spin animation. Let's set it to start with previous. Animation duration 1.5 seconds, delay 0.75. And let's apply a maximum smooth end in the spin animation options. And let's give it a preview. The little circle zooms in and it spins at the same time. That's awesome. And now we can use the animation painter to paste the same two animations to the rest of the little circles and to the big circle as well. And let's check it out on the full screen. All right. So all of the circles nicely spin in. That's nice. However, we can see this text financials, which belongs to the next big circle. And let me show you how we can fix that. Let's open up the selection pane and let's select all of the big circles that are below the first one. The first one is already animated, so that's why we're selecting only the rest of the big circles. And once they're all selected, let's add an appear animation to all of them. We can close the selection pane for now. Let's open the animation pane. And let's make sure that all of the appear animations start with previous with an animation delay of 2.25 seconds. And this will basically ensure that the text financials or the rest of the big circles don't appear right at the start and we'll see the rest of the big circles only once we transition to the next slide. So let's check it out on the full screen. That's nice. Congratulations, my friends. Now you know exactly how to create this stunning title slide animation in PowerPoint and how to create this wonderful transition to the next slide as well. And if you would like to go one step further and insert clickable slide zooms into these circles, then check out this video next and I'll see you there. Peace.